Welcome to Well-Behaved Women. This is one of your hosts, Hannah. I just dropped my lip balm. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I'm here. In action. <laughs> Boom. Um, I, I honestly would say leave it in. Yeah, that's fine. Love it. I'm also here with Lauren, Big B, and Annika. And so here we are to learn another lesson from our host, hostess, hostess with the mostest, my favorite, Lauren. Lauren. Hello. hello. Uh, that was good. Yeah. Thank you. We're gonna have, we're gonna figure out our harmonies one of these days and just I'm learning nail it. All right, that's have... actually really fun. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have a harmony every time. So for today, I recently did a guest spot on a show called The Chinese Revolution, which is hosted by a guy named Paul Hess. I think that's how you pronounce his last name. He is a very nice dude, and I learned so much about her and the nation from him mm -hmm. so um i like i'm gonna be kind of going through the script that i had for him but also adding in like well these are also the things that i learned from paul that okay were probably way better stories okay i'm yes. in yes and there's so much like yeah. it's likely gonna be a two-parter because it's insane hey I like all right a two -parter. so on this year in history charles darwin arrives at the galapagos islands Okay. 1860s is where my mind is going. I remember what time Darwin was alive, but it was 1800s. Mm -hmm. For the only time in history, the U.S. public debt contracts to zero, and the first assassination attempt on a president happens to Andrew Jackson. Oh. Mm -hmm. It's like 1810-ish. Yeah... The Ragamuffin War begins in Rio Grande do Sul in Brazil. The Ragamuffin. The Ragamuffin War. That so doesn't sound my real. favorite kind of muffin. <laughs> it does. By the it way. kind of sounds like a Me Muppet too. War. Mm -hmm. It's like Muppets going to battle. <laughs> the Ragged Muppet War. Ragamuffin. <laughs> no drums. Aren't all Muppets Muppets rabid? versus Ragdolls? Go. <laughs> That's Ragamuffin. The Ragamuffin War. Yep. That's where I went. There was fluff everywhere. Fluff. Just yeah. stuffing, bursting out of every seam. Mm -hmm. oh. It was a lot of carnage, you know. Just absolute carnage. All right, so it's 1835. Okay. Ah! I said yeah. it. 1840s really quietly so that nobody could hear me in case I was wrong, and then oh, I yeah? wouldn't be wrong. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to take your glory anyway, because well, I said 1810, and Price is Right rules always win, so... Yeah, I was way Close over. Close out going I over. I was way over. All right, okay. round whatever goes <laughs> I'm to I'm just B. kidding. It's <laughs> round one to B. <laughs> round one to B. All right. So I'm going to just start with this quote, and we're going to go from there, because... Just, yeah. Okay. So, quote, Too much mystery surrounds the Forbidden City for us to write of its inmates with assured authority. Even when the facts are known, there are two or three versions, each giving a different rendering of what occurred. This vagueness is like the nebulous parts of a Chinese painting. It has a charm that it might be a mistake to dispel. Nor is it certain that a historian, could he lift the veil, would discover the truth. This is Forbidden City. Yes. I have heard bits and pieces. Yeah. So this is okay. by Danielle Vare, who was an Italian diplomat at the time, mm -hmm. um, in his 1936 biography of Zushi, The Last Empress. All right. So on November the 29th, the 10th day of the 10th lunar month of the 15th year of the Daoguang Emperor during the Qing Dynasty. That's when she's born. The year of the goat. Hey, I was oh. born a, on a year of the goat. Fucking goat. And remember oh, that. Oh, fuck. Just... Let's count the same right. Uh-oh. So <laughs> I'll play Never Have I Ever. I'm just kidding. <laughs> So she was born in Beijing to a duke who served in the Manchu military. Um, she was one of three children. She had a sister named Wan Zhen and a brother, Gui Zhang. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, so up top, there Disclaimer. will be. I literally thought you were about to say that I'm not Chinese and I don't know how to pronounce any of this. That as well. Absolutely that. I was partly going to say that. But if you guys really want like a good education on it, go listen to the episodes that I do. They're pretty much available wherever you get your podcasts. Mm -hmm. They are. For some reason, except for one episode on Spotify that just yeah. has not been resolved. I don't know what it is. I should put a ticket in for that. 
anyway, it's it doesn't matter. Um, if you want more details on like Chinese history, that's definitely the episode to go to. This is mostly going to focus just on her life and uh, with a little bit of that sprinkled in. So, OK, so she was born in Beijing to a duke who served in the Manchu military. She was one of three children. She had a sister named Wan Zhen and a brother Gui Shang. At some point, her father died, presumably from military service, um, but he was in her life for the early part of her years. Top okay. secret. You don't get to know. <laughs> I like that you said died from military service. No, he didn't die in a war, just like being the in the yes. military. It, so it got this, him. basically Works this whole time, China is in some sort of like, uh, in some sort of conflict somewhere or another. Like it's all over the place. Okay. It's this huge tract of land and everyone kind of wants to get their fingers on it. Yeah. So she lived with her widowed mother until the age of 16 when she and 60 other women participated in a selection of wives to the Zhao Fang Emperor. All right. Zhao Fang Emperor. Sorry. So basically bride sale. Bride sale. Sell yourself to the king em or emperor. Excuse me. Not sell. sell. It's more of a, um, a social oh. partnering Okay. They're very... Still an arranged marriage. They're very diplomatic yeah, about maybe. how they do it. And at the time, it's very common for um, emperors to have multiple wives, a lot of sexual partners, mm -hmm. in you know, extras. Concubines. In order, basically, ah. to ensure a male heir to the throne. Okay, okay. So, so kind of like so some of the top society Yes. Ladies. Listen, and it's a numbers game. And, it's, that spot and it's not just like lowborn women. These are like... She was kind no of, vanity. she was a daughter of a commander. Yeah. She was someone kind of important in that world. Yeah, and one of you right. highborn broads is going to give me a son. And a highly political move as well. Right. So she was chosen um, as one of a, the concubines. Most of the women were turned away, but she was chosen as a concubine. Right. So I'm going to say wife consort or concubine, mm -hmm. just kind of back and forth. She she was she was in his harem. Okay. Um, she was a lower level for three years, she was at the sixth level of consorts as a noble Lady Lin. They have levels. Noble? They have the levels. Whole hierarchy. They have a whole hierarchy. I'm fucking serious. It's crazy. I... They These whores got to work their and way I'm up. immediately intrigued by this. I love a hierarchy for some reason. I learned <laughs> about it in Gangland when they talked about gang hierarchies, and I've been hooked. This I is going to be a lady gang. Lady Gang Wars. So in 1854, at age 19, she moved up the ranks to the fifth level. The next year, she got pregnant. So oh, that man. moved her up again. And when she had the kid, she moved up even higher in the ranks because she had a son. Oh! And skipped a grade. Damn. the son yeah. survived. He lived. Childhood. He, yeah. So once uh. he turned one, she basically got up to the point where she was only one position behind the actual wife. So was infant mortality rate high? Very high. Oh, wow. Do Very you, high. It, he have only had one son that um, that lived to adulthood. Out of how many kids? I have no idea. Okay. I Not guess that, that many. A bunch. <laughs> a bunch. All right, got it. Bunch of kids. Wow. Um, yeah, 27 wives. Them you tell me are why. strong. Yeah. Right. Not, not so much. Mm. They'd be stronger if they were, you know, be obvious. I think if they had more babies, they'd be a little bit stronger. Well, yeah, but I meant her genes. That <laughs> she got one of his kids to live. But also, yep. like, think about yeah. that. She's elevated Stop to the her. rank right below the actual wife. So, like, yes. you're still not quite at Yeah, but that's the... legality issues. Yeah. I mean, you know, I'm I sure if that know. wasn't an issue, he could probably make a little demotion and pro promotion issue. How many women situation? in history are cool with just being a side chick? None that I've ever met. You don't want the responsibility of a wife? I don't know. You tell me. I'm not the. I, I'm not in question here. <laughs> You don't want to be part of the harem? <laughs> no, not personally. <laughs> so she was important in other ways, too. Um, but basically, the kid, his name was Zaishun. He was going to get the throne whenever the whenever Zhen Feng Emperor died. Nice. Oh, because really? Because he was the only male heir. Wow. So she kind of was just important there. She was also important in other ways. Unlike most of her fellow consorts, she could read and write Chinese. Really? Yes. Her father had her educated for literacy. Yeah, he kind of prepared her for it. And so when she, when her husband, who was in his late 20s, but he started showing signs of dementia, like right right in his late 20s. Okay. So she would start so reading these things for him and actually helping respond to them and stuff with him in the room. I see. So she would take notes and write instructions according to what he wanted. How many war bonks to the head did he take? 
none. He a was just box. he was just a like heavy out. He abused a lot of materials, uh-huh. Ooh, like a lot of materials. What o- opium? What probably. Substance. Oh, I'm forgetting what years. Some we materials. Were. Yes. Okay, I see. So, and she, he's just kind of. I'm fucking emperor. Like I can do what I want. Yeah. I'm gonna do what I want. I got Throw people. off my groove. Yes. Pretty he's much. Exactly, he's Cusco. Oh. Cusco. That's on opium. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's gotta be fun. The Chinese opium's the good stuff. <laughs> oh, shit. So, um, because she was able to do all the writing and reading for him, she was able to kind of keep up with, like, what was going on in the nation. Da, 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 news da. bulletin. Mo- news bulletin elsewhere in China. All right. So uh, the nation's reeling from 21 years of war with the UK. The opium wars have decimated the country and military, largely thanks to the technological advance advantage by the British. People aren't happy. Um, other people are dead. So also not happy, but yeah. not sad. So just not everything. Just neutral nothing. They're dead. They're yeah. just nothing. Okay. Makes sense. Um, so one of these people was a British diplomat envoy named Harry Parks, who had been arrested, tortured and executed by the Chinese. Wow. This angered the British and the French who for once joined teams to fight the Chinese. Oh. They had learned from past issues with a straight up bitch from the South China seas. Like you can't do things alone anymore. You got to, Mm-hmm. If you want to take, mm-hmm. if you want to take the Chinese Navy, you gotta take it by teams. The Chinese yeah. Navy, as we learned in a previous episode, mostly former pirates at this point yes. in time. <laughs> yeah. So. Yes. Amazing. Yes. Yeah. You you can't go in unprepared with them. You better fucking not. You not to know what you're doing. Well, and at this point, they're only like one or two generations removed from that, so they're still oh, from shit. families. Fresh. They're in. They're still in naval families that get passed down from generation to uh-huh. generation, but they're also Strategy. from families that like were pirates. And so, so. those strategies came down as well. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah this so it's gonna end poorly. Yeah. For fucking the run. Case. Yeah. <laughs> swim. Don't Whatever. swim. No. No, okay, run. Get on land and run. (laughs) So, under the command of a guy named Lord Elgin, the French and British troops attacked Beijing. And when I say attacked, they were, like, at it for over a month. And they burned one of the emperor's palaces to the ground. He burned the summer palace to the ground. Not the summer palace! The summer palace! (laughs) Sons of bitches! Where will he go in the summer? Where is he going to put his pool? (laughs) Where will he summer? (sighs) Where will he summer? (laughs) Where does everyone summer? At the summer palace, of course. Crying in my bathroom. I don't know. I'm gonna say yay. <laughs> crying. It's just over there. Opening about bills. To eat. <laughs> crying. So during this attack, uh, the emperor and his family fled Beijing to a province that was north of the capital, and it called the Imperial Hunting Lodge. Wow. Oh, the Hunting Lodge. The Hunting Lodge. The Imperial Hunting Lodge sounds like where Darth Vader hangs out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what to say to that. It's just him walking around with a shotgun. He doesn't uh-huh. need it. <laughs> he's just, just, he's he's just on one side, like, the shotgun on the other. He's just doing it because he can. That's where yeah. he stops. He has for, a really know, nice a, arm a chair that like goes missions. way high, like the high wing, high back yeah. chair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he like has a big old ale that he kind of right. has to like no. lift up his mask to like try to drink it. No, he zip lines through no the issues. forest, choking everything and grabbing it as he goes. So he just comes out with a long line of just, <laughs> I got it. Yeah. All of his foes' heads nice are house. on the wall. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I see no issues. <laughs> so the emperor was already sick. So when he learned of the summer palace being burned down, he kind of spiraled into this depression and a lot more substance abuse. So it was a really short time later that he passed. All right. Just so he's it gone. was very quick. Yeah. No, I'd be upset That's too so if my sad. summer palace burned down. Yeah. <laughs> so the son was five years old when Zhen Feng Emperor passed, and he made some literal last-minute decisions on his deathbed. Um, yeah. So there's a lot of different ways that this can play out. So, again, don't at me. There's other versions in the other episode that I do. Mm-hmm. So he brought in wife number one, whose <laughs> name is Cien. Okay. We like her. Oh, okay. Um, and wife number two. Let me decide. <laughs> so she... <laughs> He gave each of them a seal stamp, uh, like a stamped seal. Like official letterhead like the, of like, like bitch number one, yes. bitch number two. That's, oh, that's shit. crazy. There's an official seal um, and they give them to both of them. So a lot of people say it's just like uh, social nicety. Yeah. Just 
this is a way of like, okay, you guys have got to work together now to raise my son. So you now are co like representatives, oh, and it was supposed to be largely yeah. symbolic. Lesbian okay. And co-parents. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're gonna be co-parent well. when like it's gonna be the the they empress. Are sister wives. Yeah, the, that's more what they are. Yeah. <laughs> it's sister wives. Yeah, I just want it, them literally to be lesbians, but if they were lesbians, we wouldn't know. Sure. Lesbian sister wives. They were never written. Possibly. We don't Gross. know. <laughs> I will absolutely not speculate that on, on that. Just yeah, none of us. For the record, not not saying that. Yeah. We can help. So. We can help. <laughs> <laughs> You're the Mormon. You tell us. We'll get to it. <laughs> Woo. Okay. So he gave each of them a stamp symbolizing they should work together. Okay. To take care of young boy. To take care of the young boy. I want to see that reality show. Oh he also God. created, in conjunction with this, a cohort of eight men to lead the dynasty until the boy was old enough to rule. Okay, Which so a council. Like <laughs> yes, literally okay. like, so you've got your moms. Yeah. And you've got these eight men who are now regents. And basically these are spokesmen yeah. for the the child emperor yeah. and they're going to work together to make decisions on behalf of the name of the emperor until he comes of age to right. be able to do this himself which is like 12 as soon as he hits council. puberty they're gonna be like i guess you're in charge something now. like that yeah and we'll get into it yeah okay um so they're just they're supposedly going to be his advocates but they're Got all it. men that Zhen Feng emperor like trusted and was mm -hmm. you know, they were part of let's find out all right and a baby. And a baby. Well, the best all nations always have eight men in charge and two I, women and a baby. I want that movie. Twelve Angry Men and a Baby. <laughs> this year from the producers of Two Angry Men and Two Men and a Baby. And coincidentally, the odd couple. Oh. Man. All right. So another version was that he didn't expect his w w wife's ever to be in charge the women's in his life mm -hmm. he was just but she kind of put this forth after his death we'll get there all right so um the two women were both elevated in their title on his death to empress dowager and they had become friends over the years they were genuinely buddies good um Cian was known as the east empress dowager and zushi was known as the west empress dowager owing to the areas of the province in which they resided mm -hmm. They got along, so that she was really more familiar with the affairs of state and international relations, um, and Cian trusted her judgment on that to be able to go to these types of meetings. Okay. Neither were really terribly happy with the fact that they'd gone from important people to just placeholders while this kid comes up. Yeah. Um, so at the time, Chinese burials had to be scheduled according to a certain astrological calendar. Okay. And um, there was a lot, there was like a period of time between Zhen Feng's death and his actual funeral. And so while they were doing this wait, um, Zushi spent time allying herself with certain members of like the, you know, of, of the upper class. Okay. And kind of making sure that she could have these allies here and there. Right. Um, started really hobnobbing with all of the important people. Yeah, basically. she's schmoozing for allies. Keep your knobs to yourself. And yes. all of these people that she's hobnobbing with happen to be oh people that have, like, issues with the regents that are also in charge. With, like, any of these eight men, if uh -huh. you don't like them, you can be on Zushi's side. Yeah. So she was, like, letting them kind of settle beefs by allying themselves with her. Interesting. If they didn't, yeah. There's there was so much politics in this. Yeah. It's very complicated. I Did Cien? Make, I was do... gonna make a joke about Mongolian beef, but I couldn't find it. <laughs> <laughs> Did Cien do any kind of political negotiation? She was more the like she built bridges. She was very much okay. you know how I said like matchmaking was about kind of the right decisions of who you are allying yourself with. Yeah, yeah. She was very much that person where okay. she was allying herself with certain families and making sure that she was the likable, so non-political. Exactly. Yeah. She was kind of the motherly, kind figure. Well, so she was like, I got this. Yeah, we got a little bitch. good cop, bad cop going on. Yeah, yeah a little okay. bit. Okay. So, Zhen Feng's late, so the late brother's Zhang <laughs> Feng's brothers, princes Gong and Chun, who had political aspirations of their own, also like allied themselves with her. Basically, they were like, well, "We're not these regents, so we should 
Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Let's just side with her and she'll give it she'll put us in places of power yeah yeah i honestly thought of them as like cersei lannister and like catelyn stark for a second absolutely (laughs) yes absolutely no there's a very there's very much a level of game of thrones to this and there were moments where i was thinking trying to put these in like kind of parallel positions as some of the characters that i'm a little more familiar with i'm waiting to see who peter baelish is (laughs) ready for some chaos Sian, we were talking about she's about the relationships. She also had absolutely no taste for court life. Like, mm. she didn't like sitting through it. She thought it was uh, terribly boring. She's a country um, gal. Yes. Mm-hmm. So the leader of one of these of these eight regents was a man named Zushun, who was really not happy with Zushi and her antics. And he was one of the reasons that Sian actually didn't go to court at all. Mm. Uh, she would get frustrated with how he treated Zushi. And he reminded her in no uncertain terms that she needed to stay out of the big boy's playground and basically go back to her palace and shut her fucking mouth. Dude. At one point, a letter came actually telling her to, quote, listen to politics behind the curtains. Fuck you. Ooh. Yeah. What was his deal? I guess he was a man. He was trying to lead to the country because yeah. he was a regent for an emperor now, and this woman was getting in the way. Yeah, him and, like, a, from a whole group of people. So, uh, I guess it's misogyny as always. A little bit. Yeah. I was just going to say, yeah. Yeah, you pretty much answered your own question. I know. <laughs> I always have my optimism hat on. <laughs> So the funeral finally gets underway in a move that we will see over and over again. She strikes with fabulous precision. So while Zushun yes. is with Zhang Feng's funeral procession, Zushi and her child emperor son scurry a little over to Beijing to get there before everyone else in the procession. Um, it gave her, her and the princes time to basically delegitimize the regents in what in the court of beijing like just let's go over there and solidify like okay what these guys are doing is out of line um they literally rewrote history saying that it was the fault of these incompetent men that Zhang feng left beijing in the first place because they had been um advisors to him before and that's Mm -hmm. why he left them in charge so he said that the they said regents failed to negotiate with the barbarians which in this case was the british and the french fucking barbarians yeah i mean i'm sure we called them barbarians yeah technically they did colonize the whole world it was pretty barbaric it was the whole world i mean the yes. french and the british were the, oh, the, main, french were the and main the british two. i They're was the thinking the two. chinese for a second i was like wait no no no, no, no. The, the french, french and, and the british, british are the main two no they so. are and then the dutch the barbarians. yes yes the, okay and the dutch the white ones is what we're talking yeah, about yeah yeah any yeah. of them the actual barbarians us I have white in me. Prove it. <laughs> I have my ancestry DNA up. Hold on. I do. Let's not do that. Okay. Uh-oh. So, Zushi gets there before everyone else. Okay. She solidifies up these things, and by the time the funeral procession, get, procession gets there, there is a whole, like, what the hell have you guys done? And, like, formal accusation in court of all of these guys. Wow. Because she's rewritten history into the narrative that she wants to show that they were being disrespectful Mm -hmm. and that they made poor decisions that got them where they are right now. On record. Good. Put them in their place. Right. So the only way to deal with all this treachery was death. So as a kindness... I don't disagree. (laughs) As a kindness... 18. They only executed three of the eight regents. Ah, ah. So at the time, treachery was one of the worst kinds of crime, and it we gotta a send a message. Yeah, we do. If we kill all of them, then nobody learns anything. <laughs> it earned gotta a be punish- one to tell the Thank story. Thank you. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> so it earned a punishment called Ling Chi, which translates to slow slicing, or sure does. Slow death of a thousand cuts. <laughs> oh, death wow. of a thousand cuts. I know no! this shit. Yeah. Ow. Ow. Your boy knows his torture. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> Oof, doof, doof, doof. Yes. I do not like that. So this is a humiliating and painful death that worked on three levels. The first, you've got the public humiliation of it all. Mm. You're tied to a post in a public area. Ah, uh, that's tradition. <laughs> Second, you're sliced Sounds slowly weird. and repeatedly, ensuring an incredibly slow and painful death. And third, according to the Confucian principles of filial piety at the time, to cut the body was a sin of sorts, which meant that after death, one could not be made whole again. Whoa! Yeah, so the person sent who's... you straight to hell. Yeah, it's disrespectful as fuck. Wow, fucking hell! They really wanted a deep cut, physical and emotional. A lot and of times, spiritual. like before it's... they would even get to the thousand cuts, your skin just starts to peel off. Yeah, Ooh. it's bad. 
It's slumps. They come in like and cuts it down. Oh, oh, it literally no. just, yeah, That's no, a word it literally I really just hate. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Sloth. Uh, oof, uh, no. She's if right, you though. get, like, if you're getting, like, uh, flogged, you'll get those rips that just basically, yeah. your Ribbons. back becomes spaghetti. Have you ever seen what? like meat spaghetti? Have you ever seen mangled flesh like that up close? Not up in what in photographs or real life? No, in real, real life. life. No, no, no. Yeah, no, it's no, pretty no. horrifying. Yeah, I haven't been presented with opportunities to see that. Just any strip of flesh removed from a person in significant size. It's pretty gnarly. It's huh. weird. Yeah. Yeah, no, I haven't seen that in real life. Just documentary slash like mm-hmm. crime photos. Most, That's fine. You know what? That's okay. Don't That's fine. See strips of yeah, most of the time well, I, I don't see it. I understand, but I didn't want to uh, assume. So yeah, that's fair. That's <laughs> very respectful of you. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> I don't know what trauma you have or have not endured. Yeah, it's more it's, emotional. It's not up to me to decide. <laughs> <laughs> so, so she didn't want this. She didn't want Ling Chi. She thought that that was just a fucking... That was torture. Yeah. So she wanted a quick death, but also made sure that the message for everyone was really loud and clear. Mm-hmm. So for the leader of the regions, for Sushun, they beheaded him. Okay. Yeah. The Off classic. Of the See, now we're getting into my territory. Damn, Sushi, yes. back at it with the beheadings. Yes. Yeah. Back at it again with the beheadings. Yep. So the other two to die were given white silk with which to hang themselves. Nice. White oh. silk. So white they can silk. show with as some much. dignity. Yeah. Is it to show as much blood as possible? I've well, when you hang, you, you, you don't bleed. Hopefully not a whole lot of blood during a hanging. I thought it would come like, because it's like suffocation where you do end up with blood. Not really. All right. right. When you, a hanging, a bit, you but. suffocate a little, but it's like after your neck's already broken, the airway is closed off after at that point. Like, mm. there's not really any blood with a with a hanging. Okay. It's considered one of the least messy ways to kill somebody. Really? Or, or okay. Kill, I don't know much to, about Or to killing. unalive oneself. Yeah. Okay. Did not know that. Yeah. Gotcha. Nice. Not, not, That's why they used to do it in public. It wasn't gory. Just drop them, you know? But the beheading part is. We've done other plenty gory things in public, so I feel like we're going to do that. We were like, it just seems like a weird time to go. Let's be gentle. (laughs) I think it's more about the mess, honestly. Now that the streets Maybe they're just like, I'm tired of You know how hard it is to get blood out of concrete? I'm tired. I think that, like, being the person who'd have to go clean up after a a beheading like that sounds terrible it does sound yeah perfect. but someone like... had to go clean it up Oops, sounds sorry. like there's a lot of stains involved yeah with a lot the beheading of... well yeah because like they don't really had hay a lot of times something like a hay sawdust i mean in the 1800s we got cobblestone streets we just let streets. it decompose i keep forgetting you sleep the there compost it compost <laughs> i like the idea of compost i don't hate it <laughs> Build a build a catacombs like the ones in France. I love those. I want to go back. <laughs> fuck. Hey, reduce, reuse, recycle, right? Yeah, no shit. Everything's yeah. a building material. <laughs> You're gonna start killing all these people. You gotta start building infrastructure. Let's make them into you architecture. Got bone people. Bones Sorry. can be used for so many useful things. As we now know, <laughs> we learned that Mary was every part of the human. Native Americans Good. taught us that. <laughs> Makes them sound a little more cannibalistic. Than <laughs> well, that's all. Yeah, maybe I didn't mean to say it that way. Like part of the pioneer. I don't hate it. <laughs> I approve this message. <laughs> so who are we beheading? Okay, hmm. so they. It. I don't remember. One of the. <laughs> it was one of. Don't the, tell me with a good time. Uh, <laughs> I whispered your mom. <laughs> so that's what he's responding to. That's so... <sighs> Sorry, was that too far? It's Better my mom. Her never listens to this. She won't listen to it. She doesn't even think I'm funny. Who cares? That's true. Oh she God. doesn't think you're funny. Anyway, it was one of the uh, one of the self-elected homies. They were they killed a bunch of them to send a message, and they're gonna say, "Oh, just one more. Hmm. We're gonna behead this one." So order of the day dictated that the family members of these traitors also be killed. I don't hate that either. Wait, uh-huh. you said the family? Yeah. Yeah, the family members. So you're a traitor. Your mom and dad are dead now, yeah, too. Yeah, that's going on in North so Korea, Korea right now. So is your brother. Yeah, no, that's a very common practice in the East. Yep. Oh, shit. Because I guess it's like if you dishonor yourself and your family, your well, wife. Then, like, how do we know that anymore? they're not in right. on it, too? Yeah, you don't yeah. know their intentions. If he's a traitor, his family might be as well. Yep. 
That's so hard, though. Yeah. I mean, after you've decided to kill people for basically no reason, it's pretty easy. It's pretty easy. Yeah, to do. yeah. 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 Exactly. Justification is a yeah. small step Super in the process easy. at uh-huh. that point. You yeah. really just have There's to There's like that, that line. one very big, big, big fat line, and then uh, once you step all the way over damn. it, like, You're it's like, just super easy. Yeah, it's easy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Once you break that boundary, you can keep going. <laughs> yeah. Keep it's busting. Like when you jump out of a plane for the first time. You go after their pits, too. That was easy. I can do that again. Yeah, their flowers. And, wow. you know, might as well take out their neighbors. It's all, it's all this build up before you do it for the Why do we need a country? Yeah, too. If you know, if it's just the five of us, then the rest of them fuck off. <laughs> At that point, this is obviously not how I actually feel. Forget No, I think it is how she feels. I no. Want, I want it on record. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I mean about hyperbole is getting us in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> You've already said too much. No, I'm just kidding. I was born saying too much. <laughs> oh. So were we. I don't think I said anything yet. Oh, well. I was just the loud one. I oh. couldn't help it. I and I was yeah. always like, no, oh, you need to quiet down. Mm. Fuck off. Mm-hmm. Since I started talking, I just didn't stop. Fantastic. And they really... Loved it. Had a hard time corralling me. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I had a hard time with indoor voice, so it was hard to take me to restaurants. What mm. does that even mean? Well, so the story is is uh, there was a gentleman sitting there. Yet. No, I just mean I feel oh. you. I was oh. also. What is it? What even is it? <laughs> okay, voice? I totally misread. I'm bad at sarcasm. Sorry. I've learned that as I've aged. It's okay. Sweet. My whole family is just nonstop sarcasm, so mm. it's really eat or be eaten. Mine's sarcasm until, like, something goes too far and then none of it was sarcasm and you were just being an ass the whole time. Mm-hmm. It's like, whoa. Well, see, that's what's fun about Where's it is you can, you, can't, you can you can't hide the, the asshole and the sarcasm if you're clever enough. Yeah, this is like a, they toe the line until someone's feelings really get yeah. hurt and then it's like, it was never a joke. It was always, you are always being a dick. It, yeah, it's like well, when you, you, were you always say all a thing. trying to say something sarcastically to shield something else something right? real, like yeah. so the best is when you've gotten to a point where somebody says on your behalf oh he's kidding and then you go oh, no i wasn't <laughs> no i wasn't that's, that's even ours. better the look on their face mm-hmm. uh, that's a slow burn a slow burn <laughs> love it where are we at oh yeah oh okay everybody's stoned yeah, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so, so she didn't want to f- kill the family members. Mm-hmm. She was like, no, nah, we're not doing that. She also said no to pretty much every aspect of leadership standard at the time. Um, the Qing dynasty just didn't have female rulers. I think there was like only one ever. Ah. And she became the female regent um, mm-hmm. in the in that time. Mm. So this ousting became known as the, the Jin Yu Ku. Jinyu Ku. Yes. Not a so, so now that Zushi and Sien were in charge, they sent out decrees saying as much. They declared themselves as the sole two decision makers uh-huh. without interference, quote unquote. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that anything they said went, including changing the name from the tiny emperor from Qi Shang, which means auspicious, to Tongzhe, which it means collective stability. Collective stability. Yes. Uh-huh. All right. Mm-hmm. That's it the kind of idea you want like to present. The, like the direction we're going. He's going to yeah. be stable after three or four years old. So, like, don't take now. Sounds like a Wait, woman. Wait, how old is sure. he at this time? Still a baby? <laughs> Sounds like He's a woman. Like sure. <laughs> Does sound like a woman. <laughs> He's Sounds like, like something that's being run by a woman. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely it is. Because it's being run by women. Yeah. Oh, that's exactly yeah. what's happening. <laughs> Welcome to reality well, this here. This is very funny. Collective stability. Oh, nice. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Who came up a with man that? man did not come <laughs> up with <laughs> that. That's what I'm saying. Not at all. <laughs> what was it before again? Auspicious. Yeah, right. Yes. Uh-huh. Which is like, what, curious? Yeah, I, I guess, like... Auspicious means like important. Oh, very different. And yeah, I don't know. A great renown. So, so, I was just gonna say conducive a to success. Oh, conducive yeah. to there success or favorable. Or favorable. Oh, favorable. Okay. Okay. favorable. Okay. okay. I was Giving on the right track. Or being a sign of future success. Yes. Basically, by saying I'm the best. 
A little. Sure. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, that is going to be successful. Auspicious is sort of a hoity-toity word, so, like, yeah. Okay. It feels pretty hoity-toity. Uh, yeah, a little bit. It's, it's an SAT word. I definitely would have seen that on the SAT. So they still had to deal with all the bullshit of the Grand Council, which is basically like a Senate that she, they uh, have yes, to kind of deal Grand with. the Grand Council. Yes, where they talk shit out, where they talk shit out and made decisions. They talk shit, they talk shit they out. They talk shit, they talk shit out. They made decisions from fancy seats for people that never could in a million, ever million, million years afford to sit in that same seat. Nice. Like, they couldn't even buy the chair. Mm. And all these people are just making decisions for them. Expensive ass chair. Yeah, it's <laughs> fucking crazy. So this is run by one of the princes, so anything coming in was to go first through the Empress Dowager, and then back to the council, and then back to the Empress. It was a very big bureaucracy, and that was mm-hmm. just kind of how things were done at the time. Um, I don't know. Because. Okay. Um, officially, the jobs were just to apply the seals to documents for Sian and Zushi, but they also kind of helped influence opinion by the way, by the conversations that they had, by the meetings that they had, who they're talking to that kind of thing all right so now the fun starts all right so 1861 they're still dealing with the fallout of the opium wars and on the southern side there's another civil war happening there's this national movement called the self-strengthening movement it has to do with being crushed by the british like beforehand mm-hmm. and this nation is trying to get dr- stronger like you know we fucking need help because we yeah. got our asses whooped um, that's basically what, where they're at. Yeah. So they're trying to adopt more philosophies that were Western-oriented when it came to wartime and weaponry and that kind of thing. Um, they knew that they couldn't defend themselves if an outside force attacked ever again, and the government leadership was basically no little to no help because they were just antiquated. It was an antiquated system. Yeah. In a in a kind of newly modern world of people that wanted to fight. So the entire government, both national and regional, was basically corrupt. And it goes through Same, bro. now, and <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a whole thing. It takes a while, um, and and at every level of this story, there will also there will always be like certain players that are taking payments here and there. So you never quite can. People are layered, you know. Yeah, people are layered. People are just greedy and yes. self self serving. That's mm-hmm. really all it comes down to. All right, so the entire government is corrupt. And there's a lot of systems set in place to protect them in their phony jobs. Of course. But 1861 also happened to be the year of official examinations. And Zushi decided to use that opportunity to make herself everyone's boss. And she requested an audience with any official above a provincial governor. So it's a lot of fucking people. Mm -hmm. And it's supposed to be done by an entire department. But Zushi basically decided to just do it herself. Oh, shit. Um, She didn't like what was happening, so... As an example to the rest of official of the officials, she had two of these officers a- executed. Fuck. Yeah. I don't hate it. <sighs> she really knows how to make a point. Yeah. So one of them, she did it after. Yourself. Well, also make a statement. Yeah. Fuck the cars. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Make a statement and make sure that you are being like you are not being misunderstood here right. so she has she had one of them um executed after he had tried to bribe his way out of a demotion nice. and another who was supposed to protect uh Cheng Zhao when it was under attack which is a city mm-hmm. but instead fled away he let's just ran like a little scared little bitch yeah let's just talk about nice. the embarrassment <laughs> you're about to be oh, demoted God. and make less money and now your bribe has also been rejected like, yeah but you let, so like now you're adding dead. insult to injury now yeah. you're just dead I, well i just offered you money i clearly don't have because i'm still getting this damn demotion mm-hmm. that's insane it's a double thumbs down like having to bribe your way out of a demotion <laughs> <coughs> failing to bribe your way out of the Oh, promotion. yeah. Well, that's the next the step. I know. So she has two of them just executed. And so without taking care of, she implements a bunch of foreign affairs ministries for international relations. She restores regional armies. She modernizes railroad systems and in- builds factories and builds up arsenals. Hmm. She drives the increase in industrial and commercial productivity in the nation and basically basically ensures this period of peace following these wars. Everyone's fucking tired. Everyone is devastated. They've lost somebody in the war, either, you know, themselves or a family member or a friend, and everyone's fucking poor. <laughs> she ensured a period of peace and recovery for this nation that was yeah, just... Was tired and beat to fuck. They were tired and beat to fuck, and they just needed a breath. Yeah. 
Um, so she made sure that they could have that, and it we kind didn't of get it. Kind of, <laughs> well, I was gonna say, what an odd request. What? I mean, like it wasn't an official request; it was just what the country needed. Yeah. They were barely holding it together, and they needed a time uh, where nobody was attacking them, and where they could just kind of recover a little bit economically and like physically like rebuild their little towns and shit. Mm-hmm. Which is perfectly reasonable and seems like the thing that we just like should do no, right. after a How war, right? Like right. Take all right, a minute. guys, I will never consider that. <laughs> leave them alone. <laughs> we go from war to war here. Uh-huh. <laughs> Let them recover for a little bit. They're hurting, but no. No, no. That's a... You don't kick them when they're down, right? No, that's no sleep. See? See? The man? <laughs> In fact, double time. Put pins in your collars, goddammit. <laughs> all right, so during this time, not only are they doing all of that, but, like, they're learning English and French and translating books, like, from these languages into Chinese. They're expanding education. They're sending people abroad, yeah. getting them sponsored yeah. to go to these private schools oh, yeah. in English-speaking countries. Like, she is on the she whole, like, what? international growth thing. She got it. She got it. She also shook things up in court. There was a majority of Manchu representatives dating back to the 1600s. So she put, all right. So traditionally the Qing dynasty was run by Manchu people. Like if that's just, those are the tribes and that's, mm-hmm. I don't know, from Manchurian area. And they were traditionally the ones that dealt with in all of the government. And so there was this other group called the Hans and she started putting officers that were members of that clan inside of the, her army. And she in, in she assigned one of them to be like this big general and put him in charge of a lot of her like armies and her little, uh, you know, her little scout groups and that kind of thing during a lot of these little battles. You've still got little civil wars and little coups happening on the north shore, like on the north. Love a good uh, coup. And what? Love a good coup. Yeah. I mean, they're still, they're fighting with the Russians, and they're fighting with the Mongolians, and they're fighting with the, you know, they're not, they're not but fighting they're with not the Koreans, large. they've got a good relationship Koreans with them. have their own problems. We'll go into that a little bit. Not a lot, but a little bit. Take me there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, varying her representation, she revived enthusiasm for the dynastic legis- legacy for the time being. Basically, she kind of kept the kingdom alive because she was shaking things up. Mm-hmm. It was new. Okay. Um, and so in this move to put Han representatives into various positions, she had also entrusted the revered Zhang army to a Han emperor, Han commander or Li when Manchu commanders were ousted. Like she pulled them out and put in Hans. So at the time they were deep in battle with a rebel group called the Taiping rebel army. And when the Zhang army won in 1864, she showered a lot of these officers and commanders with like big fancy titles. Oh yeah. Yeah. Big rewards. Oh yeah. Big risk, big reward. I literally have that in my notes. Oh, I love it. They also, they also probably, wait, did they get land as well? Um, no, I think they get a lot of titles. And okay. like at the time, a lot of the land has kind of already been divided up into families. I and see. so I don't know if that was. Uh, yes. So it's probably rewards. just like a big raise, big income. Maybe. Boost, uh, maybe. A pin, it's a, it's a, a broke ass country jacket. too. Yeah. Uh, okay. Like, so. they, literally, they're, try, they're super, super broke. And they're trying to like re- get money from taxes and stuff. To okay. get them back to a point of any sort of economic stability, and but like, it's really hard. Asian cultures are largely honor bound in so many things, so I'm so sure the title a, was yeah the social very status prestigious. of it yeah very much so. Okay, getting to wear the ribbon around town, <laughs> right? Exactly. Yes, a pin on your jacket, whatever hey. the thing is. Right? Well, and you get to like have it as kind of yes, yes a piece no, of it flair. Piece it flair. It <laughs> I mean, obviously, much more. I mean, I'm not to say that no, much more though. official flair. Yeah, the flair yes. nonetheless. Yeah, and very honorable government issued flair. Okay, it's another game of thrones thing we've got lord patire uh, who or fucking peter it's peter baelish for patire for baelish four fucking audiobooks and then for five it's all of a sudden it's patire baelish and fuck you <laughs> what? oh my god it's the same that guy is, it's, same, it's raging it's the same guy that narrates all five audiobooks no. of that fucking novel of those fucking novels yeah fired him peter baelish for four novels, we get to number five. It's been like 20 years. You'd think that he'd maybe spend 20 minutes going over like what he actually no. used to write no. or how he used to read. No, all of a sudden it's Pattaya Baelish. That's Fuck raging. Off. That's Sorry. very enraging. Anyway, that guy, he has a billion titles that, guy can that stick go his along with his name. Sun, don't shine. 
<laughs> his little finger. His exactly. little finger. He has all of these different <laughs> titles, and it gets it longer and longer the more important he gets. Yeah. So now they've got all these titles that they can add. Yeah. They're more important the longer your title. I see. I <laughs> yes. see. And I'm not going to really get into that because it's, I don't give a fuck well, about them. And they're very important people, and, and they have the right hobnobbery. But don't rem don't forget, like, she still is Dower a concubine. Rappers. Oh, yeah, she's no, she's still bitch number two. A comp concubine. Ah. She's never been through the front gates. CN, who I does family relations. Yeah. Yes. I know. I know. Yes. I know. Yes. The what did I say at the beginning? I know used. how it works. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. That's exactly it. Every time I say something, Laura looks at me like, how did you know that? I know stuff. <laughs> You drink and you know things? That's right. I smoke and I know things. <laughs> I just smoke there and you know is, things. Yeah. yeah. So all of these little rebel groups and the battles and stuff, they're kind of dying down. So she starts concentrating more on these internal issues. Um, her brother-in-law, Prince Gong, one of the princes that had helped her kind of gain power. I want to be Prince Gong. Had, he had been gaining titles and wins of his own. And he was essentially the head of the foreign affairs ministry. And through the grapevine and little strategery that we've started to see with so she she little kind of chaos little ladder. yes so she rumor has it that prince gong was a threat to her and cn's absolute authority like room i smell music. xoxo ah, yes gossip gong Mutiny. So, <laughs> in a move that would make modern gop legislators salivate zushi decided gong had to go gong's gossip sounds like an oxymoron gong's gotta go <laughs> Gossip gong. Don't you gossip, normally, gossip gong. Yeah, but don't you normally whisper the gossip if you're gonging the gossip? There's ways to gong quietly, too. <laughs> Is there? Yeah, I've done it. I've never known a gong to be quiet. You do a circle. Yeah, you just do that or like a little... <gasps> yep. You can make lots of sounds with a gong. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you can. XOXO. Gossip, gossip, gossip gong. Gossip gong t-shirts coming in hot. <laughs> gossip gong. I can see the script right now. And like the sass on the gong's face, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> well, it's kind of like a little wait. Yes. <laughs> With the chin. Uh, With thick like eyelashes pretty... and lip liner. Yes. It's like the pretty yes. little liars and got oh secret dong. Oh <laughs> Bingo. That's exactly what it is. I think that's our theme song. I think you found it. <laughs> I got a secret. Our whole podcast must gong. change to gossip gong. <laughs> But Gong gotta go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't need that. Bye Gong. <laughs> bye Gong. Bye Gong. Bye Gong. Say bye Gongs. Bye gongs. <laughs> I'm tickled pink. Gong with the wind. Gong with the wind. <laughs> Do Gong. <laughs> okay, I'm done. <laughs> I swear that you have one line every Yeah, time. you do. It's so good. <laughs> I like it. Yep. Mm. Okay, so Gong's gotta go. We're getting into she's Gong's gotta go. Gong's gotta one. go. How are we going? How are we doing this? How are we doing this? So one day in 1865, the scribe that wrote for Prince Gong wrote a memorial or an official memo. How do you get a fish on that memo? Uh -huh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> An official memo. <laughs> Sorry, that was so stupid. I love it, though. Uh, anyway, he was stating that Prince Gong had been disrespectful of the emperor and accusing Gong of corruption. Gong, having built up quite a support system in court, basically thought it was just nothing, and he dismissed it. Mm -hmm. But so she and Cien took that and ran with it and officially accused him of displaying improper conduct in front of the Empress's Dowager and that there were other charges to combine with that to get him dethroned. Mm -hmm. oh. Basically, he had disrespected the Emperor, he had disrespected the mother's regent. Yeah. Um, and he's gotta go. Yeah. No, they're gonna talk shit, you gotta be able to back it up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he was demoted. He was kicked out of court, and he was stripped of all of his titles. Yeah, fuck yeah. you, Gong. She ain't heaven, none of that. Yeah. So the court was in an uproar. This is a whole big thing, because you don't just dethrone a prince, especially really like... Gong with the wind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so two of Gong's brothers begged him... Gong for... in 60 seconds. Oh! <laughs> That's excellent. Oh. That's a good one. <laughs> 
Got any others? I gotta know. I mean, he could put up a sign that says gong fishing, but that's... Gong fishing. Gong o fishing. Uh-huh. I have a feeling one or two more might just... <laughs> They'll just come out. Better out. They'll be They'll fine. Better yeah. out than in. Yeah. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. I did another good Shrek. Yeah, book. I know. I've been meaning to watch Shrek lately. I just, it's been on my mind a lot. You know, Love we that. watched it, what, like three months ago? I feel like... More recently than most adults, I think. I, I will go time... from one to two immediately. I will go from Shrek 1 to Shrek 2 with, like, three seconds in between. I feel like historically, every time I've gone to the gym, it's on one of the TVs. Why? It's, like, Weird. always, like, TBS or TNT is, like, always playing it. Weird. That is an interesting... I've never seen well, Shrek like, at the free gym. connection. I don't know what that is. <laughs> It's cable television. Maybe it's because <laughs> laughter is the best medicine. You like get endorphins from laughing. Well, that's, it's either right. It's and then it's like always followed by like an Avengers movie or so. It's always uh, you know these whatever. Fun fact of the day: <laughs> Go to your local gym and let us know if you see Shrek on there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I really want to know. I would love to hear. Yes, yeah, anybody awesome. who does see yes. Shrek at the gym. Because... I have started. <laughs> I've started turning comments on wherever I can. So please, if you want, leave yeah, a comment. And let us call know. Call it no. <laughs> Yeah, we'll get a number. You can call in. And let us know. I, that's a joke. I have no idea if I'm going to get a number. We're not getting a number. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. We just said, oh, do it. <sighs> So Court's in an uproar. The brothers are begging her to basically allow him to return, even just in a weird, like, just in a minimal capacity. They called her actions. Make him a cupbearer. What? Make him a cupbearer. Nice. So, no, no, it was like, okay, you're overreaching. Like, maybe he, he slighted you, but you don't need to strip him of all of that. Like, ah, come on, that's, that's that an was overreaction. An overreaction. Uh, I'm with yes. her. Fuck him. So he begged her, begged her to give him back some of his dignity. So did his brothers. Gong himself was even said to have stood in front of both of them in tears. Aww. So they took pity on him and they reinstated him with the foreign affairs ministry. But he was no longer prince regent and he would never earn a seat of political power ever again. Mm. Sounds fair to me. Yeah. yeah. She's Makes been sense. pretty reasonable thus far. I trust her judgment up to this point. Yeah, she smacks you, and then she's like, oh, but it's okay. Mm-hmm. Lead, mm-hmm. lead fit. Or Did you learn your lesson? Okay. Iron fist, velvet glove. Something like that. Yeah. Smack somebody with a bag of oranges. <laughs> Wasn't that Bing Crosby? <laughs> Maybe. Random. Random okay. name dump. Don't worry about it. It's All rumor. right. The so Bing Crosby used to beat his wife with a bag of oranges, apparently. What? I don't know. That's I got I... that from a Family Guy episode, so I'm See? not well, sure. Go. All right, spread it around. Facts. That's why it was a question mark. True Is facts. that Bing Crosby? Pull up Snopes. True facts. <laughs> True facts. <laughs> well, are we really Googling this? I yes. guess we are. Now we got to know. We got to know if I'm... I can't leave a rumor out there. I've got to find <laughs> out if I oh spread back I was, actually, I was happy not knowing. <laughs> oranges. Well, it didn't autofill, but it the is a family, family guy, guy thing. Right up. It is a family guy. It, it is a family it, guy. Yeah. Thing. Okay, so it cannot be deemed as fact. This is a rumor. Orange, so get the message across, uh, and you won't leave a bruise. And blame <laughs> Seth MacFarlane on that one. Actually, don't don't blame Seth MacFarlane because I don't have the money to deal with a legal battle. Well, <laughs> I don't think this pod's gonna reach him just quite yet. Yeah, no one's gonna hear this. Not and quite yet. Maybe we'll leave this part out. There's something that mentions for legality. I should leave it in. Been okay. Extremely expensive. I did say I'm not at actually. At that point in time, <laughs> for Bing Crosby. You what? That oranges would have been extremely expensive for Bing Crosby. <gasps> what? We love, we love a era. factual irrelevancy. Okay. Well, I guess the idea is maybe he like hit people with fruit. And Lemons. Ch- yeah, something. Like some sort of fruit, but they said oranges on a Family Guy episode, so they I sure ran did, with it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. It's like uh, after school special, he just walks into the, the living room to tell him about how to perform domestic abuse without leaving a mark on your your target. Although I will well, say, fun. Fun. now yeah, I realize how true. deeply Family Guy affected me in terms of my pop culture knowledge. You and everyone else. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I feel like I really should own up to the, the fact that I, I, got, I got a lot of random or non-real facts or... Mm-hmm. Rumors from family. Half facts. Yeah, like half facts. I'm uh, sure American Dad did too. Cause some conflated guy. rumors and information. South Park. Although they're too ridiculous to be taken. News this morning. What's up? Casa Bonita passed all inspections. And it's oh, a great yes! grand opening. Yes! What? Yay! All 
also, Bing Crosby was living in Southern California, so that other thing that I read before, bullshit. He would have had to plenty of access to one. Of it. You can drive around and pick them off the ground. What's yeah. Casa Bonita? Casa what's, Casa, what's Casa Bonita? Okay, all right, this has to go in the episode because if anybody doesn't already know, we're Everybody go to Casa Bonita. integral part in the state of Colorado. Of Colorado history. It's dinner theater. It is an icon. It is dinner theater. Um, like so kid-friendly. about just just a just a few minutes down the road from here. It's really, very, it's very it's close. It's in to Lakewood here. on Colfax. Is, we know when it's opening it and who wants minutes. to camp out. There's Supposed no, to open no in grand May. Open, yeah, there's but no grand they opening announced announcement date. yet. Yeah, That's, um, but everything is a go. So okay. Casa Bonita is like just been a joke in Colorado forever, pretty much. Yeah, because a long running joke on South Park. I mean, has, okay. have you guys so, been? I'm no, it's been closed. No, because then no, ever in your yeah, life, yeah. I've never There's personally one location. been. I've been three or four times as a kid when I came out here to visit my grandmother. So like, yeah. I can verify a lot of the stuff that. Oh I my gosh! <laughs> Tell us about Casa Bonita. Then you're more qualified than I. Oh, what do you, you remember about it? What I remember about it is, I mean, my grandma would like hyped me up. Because Casa Bonita for her was like a huge deal. Because I think she, oh God, I can't remember when they opened. Because my dad went since they opened and he took me as well. But like you would go in and it's like the whole restaurant area was kind of facing this big waterfall in a big pool. And so, like you, would, it's Mexican themed, yep. but none of it is actually Mexican food. No, it's like Tex-Mex. And it's all horrible. At yeah. least for the previous management, it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I went, supposedly I was a kid, they brought in like a big time chef. We'll see. I am super excited to see how the food stacks up, but it cannot do any. It, it'll be ye- light years ahead of it. I guarantee yeah. it already. Because like as a kid, awesome. But when being an adult and trying it, my grandmother was like, "Oh, it was horrible food." But the only good thing is that they have sopapillas. Yeah, that was oh, a, I love sopapillas. And that's mentioned in the episode, so I'm very likely that there. I guess there will be sopapillas. And so you should cliff put the, divers that yeah, jump off divers. the waterfall. Oh, into a pool. okay. Sorry, I was getting to that part. Yeah, I've heard but about these where, places. Yeah, and they have like Black Bart's Cave, so it was like this little like. Tiny you little. Guys, it's a chain. Yeah, there's multiple it's locations. It's in Oklahoma. Yes. Oh, but for some I reason, it took on a whole new life it, it, in notoriety. And then they, like, yeah. Closed down. Yeah. I didn't know it yeah. was a chain. Yeah, I tried um, to tell you that before. It's I had like no Gigi's. idea either. This is like brand new news for me. I don't know the, what that is. It was like another Mexican chain that just kind of like turned upside down one day. Okay. Well. If you try to tell me something and you use another example to explain that example and you reference something that I've never heard of, that it, I think I it doesn't, yeah. really <laughs> land, it doesn't but... do the thing. Anyway. Um, but okay, I had no idea. But it like became a bigger deal in Colorado, I guess, for its cheesiness and how bad the food was. Yeah. And it was more of a kid's attraction. And so, oh, yeah, okay. I remember specifically the cliff diver and like the the sopapillas, the tables, if I remember correctly, were like red. <laughs> like I was a really little kid, elementary mm-hmm. age. Um, and then eventually, yeah, they just like shut up, shut up, shut down, or <laughs> they just shut the fuck shut up. Shut up and the fuck shut down. Up. They, they shut up. They, they shut, shut up, up shut up, shut down. Shut down during COVID. Yeah, they were done. Yeah. I mean, everybody they knew COVID was that. like, yeah, going to be the end of it because wow. nobody was ever going to go back to that place. So it's, whole, and I think, it became really popular nationwide because of the South Park episode yes. about it. My aunt, my dad, we were living in Texas when that episode aired, and he recorded it, and he and I just watched it over so and funny. over and over. We lost our shit when Cartman loses his shit at the beginning. Cause so Kyle, the, the yeah. crux of the episode is they're going there for Kyle's birthday, and mm-hmm. Cartman isn't invited, and he's trying everything. And he wants to go yes, so badly. Yeah, I've seen this episode, yes. yes. Well, okay. fuck you, Kyle! <laughs> <laughs> and he gets there and just goes Damn, off. Damn, that was good. On Thank his you. I tried. Adventure. So <laughs> the so owners, funny. the guys who created South Park, bought the restaurant, and they've been redoing yep. the whole thing. Mm-hmm. That's why it's everybody. That's why it's such a big. I heard that there's I heard that there's actually a in. like uh, Tegrity Farms. So like they, or at least they're starting. Probably. No way. Sure. I'm sorry. I, I heard a rumor. It. Okay, yeah, I, I like it. this rumor. Yeah, I so hope it Trey Parker and Matt Stone own Casa Bonita, and they're the ones reopening it. Fuck off. That sounds like Yeah, so it's going to be fun. great. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We should talk about um, this badass bitch, though, because if we keep talking about South Park. Yeah, I could. Then, uh, we should have our own side comment, though. We got to talk about that eventually. But <laughs> we definitely do. Yes, but we should. You're right. We should refocus. <laughs> All right. So we're talking about Zashi. 
<laughs> so she's got the government's balls in her hand. Yes. Got their wrinkles. Yep, Let's yep. Dumb. They're so, <laughs> we'll scratch and tickle. <laughs> She's been encouraging the recovery and growth of China. She's been following, you know, all of these wars. She's trying to boot, bolster up the country. Um, she's outlived a husband. She's ousted eight men and killed three of them to become a co-queen. She, and pretty much killed or dethroned she anyone. She outlived an opium lord who died at 29. Yes. That's hilarious. But Big she was, they put her in, firmly in charge. And <clears throat> she pretty much either killed or ousted anyone who got in her way. So she was just fucking in charge large large and in charge it's yes. secret bitch stuff yeah so this is 1872 and uh the little boy emperor is now 17 tell us about the boy king so the boy king gets to start to choose a from <laughs> fucking a oh my god he's choosing his wives it's time for him to choose all the bitches he's yeah yes yeah, the harem choosing his the wife royal the harem. Harem. Harem lineup Cusco's yes, literally. Lineup right so here. here's my question: do, Who does he call mom? Um, I guess Zashi, she, because she, she is his fa- his mother. I'm just saying she's not the the queen. It doesn't matter. She is co queen so. with Cien. So they're basically she, Cien's kind of like the mother figure, and Zushi is the father figure. But Zushi is absolutely his mother. Mm-hmm. So is he, he had closer two, with Zushi? Um, not really. Uh, you <laughs> he had a why. complicated relationship with. Both of his parents, or both of his moms, for different reasons. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, we'll Did get into the family that. therapist take good notes? Uh, not really. Doubtful. Fuck. I know. Okay. They weren't really good about recording their minutes, or recording their minutes of recording their minutes. How did they bill our insurance? I don't, I don't understand. <laughs> One of the many <laughs> nightmares of having universal health He had to healthcare. call. <laughs> that, at the risk of sounding insensitive, that doesn't sound like Eastern medicine to me. <laughs> no. <sighs> All right, so j- this guy's an idiot. He is, like, at the age of 16, he can barely read. So she's hiring all these tutors, and she's hiring them because of her- their extensive skill and because of their renown within the community. Mm-hmm. But basically, the more she pushes for him to take his lessons, the more he pushes against wanting to take lessons. He fucking hates learning. Sounds like a teenager. He doesn't want to rule. He knows that it's coming, but he's having, like, he just, he's... he's... I don't even want to be king. Basically, yeah. Well, no, he knows he's going to be king, and so there's a whole thing. He's like, I'm going to be king anyway. Yeah. Oh, he inherited Um, his daddy's arrogance. We love it. Yes, it's been fantastic. Not only that, but he has started learning how to, like, jump over the palace walls with some of the eunuchs that are in the palace that work with them. And they'll go to these brothels where he can go and... This is literally just Game of Thrones. It's literally literally Game of Thrones. He has a boyfriend and everything. The the boy king is running around with the dickless monks. Yes, he has a boyfriend and everything. His arrogance and ignorance is all over the place. definitely George R. R. Martin knew some shit. Right. So... All of this... The tale is old as time. Yeah, exactly. Uh, History repeats itself again, I see. So all of this is happening, and he is, like, basically just kind of rebelling against the idea of having to Mm -hmm. rule. Um, But he was supposed to choose a bride and harem. So Komami Empress Dowager Sien, she comes into the foreground a little here. I told you that she deals a lot with the familial relations, and she kind of does the the behind-the-scenes, like, relationship building. Yeah, we're in her wheelhouse. We're in her wheelhouse. And so she advised Tongzhe Emperor as to who to choose as his bride. All right, so Zishi also had opinions, but Sian basically helped him more with this, and he ended up choosing the bride that she had kind of suggested. So she had her suggestion as a bride, and then one of uh, Zishi's suggestions as one of his concubines. Okay. The wife he took was a little problematic (laughs) to Zishi, Mm. like, personally. So when they went to Beijing... Um, to oust all the regents during the funeral. As it turns out, Prince Zhang was one of those regents, Mm -hmm. and he was one of the people that had been killed. So Prince Zhang had a granddaughter, and so Jiaxun Epirus was born the year of the tiger, and basically to Zushi, who was a goat, a tiger represented a threat to her, and oh she was kind of superstitious enough to think that this girl would eventually defeat her. This is hilarious because my mom and I, we love each other, but we have a very headbutting mm-hmm. relationship. Is I'm a goat, she's tiger. a tiger. That's funny. My dad what? is something else. 
What animal were you born in? The sea goat. MacGyver born. Oh, as no. far as the <laughs> I was like, a sea goat. Uh, a the sea year, goat. The year of the rooster. Rooster, huh? Yeah. I'm a pig. Dragon. Whoa. Oh, shit. I don't know what goat and like all the animals don't know specifically mean. mean, but I just yeah. know which one I'm I under. I up a long time ago. Actually, I had some friends in high school who told me what it meant because their parents were, so their dad like grew up in the States, but their mom came to the States from China when she was uh-huh. like 18 or something. So they would celebrate like legit Chinese New Year and oh, they spoke yeah. Chinese in the house. And, oh, that's yeah. nice. Um, so this is where I actually bring Game of Thrones into the script. I literally wrote this in because it oh, reminds me it. so much of it. All right, so... I love Game of Thrones. Empress reminds me of Marjorie Tyrell. Ooh, I love Marjorie Tyrell! So she enchants the king. I love redheads. She really kind of monopolizes his time. They very much enjoy spending time together, but he also is still going out and doing all of these brothel consort things. Well, yeah, man with um, power. But she... Just, just doing is, gay teen shit. Let him live his yeah, life. Yeah, but it's very... Uh, it's very chaste. Uh, yeah. She reads poetry to him on their wedding oh. night. It's like a whole... It's a whole thing. So it's very... Intriguing. Much a... Kind of a pure relationship of love. Yeah, she's oh. a Whereas he's okay. kind of going and getting his little sexy jollies off in the... Yeah. Sexy jollies. Sexy well, jollies. That's, that's a great term. Tiny dick syndrome. They're getting their jollies off in a different way. Oh, yeah, for sure. So, she's Marjorie Tyrell. Mm-hmm. She comes in. She's good to the emperor. She's very kind to him. She does poetry. She kind of appeals to the more effeminate side of him mm-hmm. um, that he really can't talk about. Um, but she was also very quick to, like, claim her territory. Mm-hmm. So, once she was told by her personal assistants, basically, like, watch your mouth around Sishi. You don't really want to mess with her. And you just need to be more agreeable and docile around oh. her because she's the one that really makes the calls. Mother-in-law from hell? Yes. So Jashun Emperor instead responds, I am a principal consort, having been carried through the front gate with pomp and circumstances, as mandated by our ancestors. Empress Dowager Zishi was a concubine and entered our household through a side gate. Hmm... That's a very Rude. bold statement. Rude. She is co queen, essentially. Yeah, she is now queen. She's, she's been and... lifted. Yeah. Well, yeah, because she she's is queen now... mother now. She's no yeah. longer queen she's because the boy is of age and has his Yeah, and he emperor. has his little count command. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is a very, very strong. And this is a. So this gal says, I'm new queen emperor. You shut up, old lady. God, what is this? It's a bold move, Cotton. Yeah, yeah, it's a bold move, Cotton. <laughs> FNA. They're going to throw her off the fucking tower. All right, so I guess we can throw stop off the it there. Wall. And then <gasps> cliffhanger? Part two. Part two. Oh, shit, we got a cliffhanger. We do. All right. So that's Throw the end. Off the cliff. Is I came through the front door, bitch. You came in through the side door. Yeah. So dun, dun, dun. Who's really in charge? That's like, what she's thinking. Damn. Next time on Forbidden City Dramas. <laughs> oh, God. Next time on Real dun, Housewife dun. of the Forbidden City. Oh, yeah. Real Housewives? It's totally like a, a little bit of a soap opera for sure. Or Real Harems of Real the, harems for, of for the, the Forbidden, Forbidden City. City. I was yep. going to say General So's Hospital, but that. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> that's a spicy patient. <laughs> oh, that's bad and good. Oh, I don't know if I should laugh. <laughs> I really don't know. Cause, <laughs> oh, that's good. All Thank right, you. well, yeah. folks, it looks like we have to stop here because Lauren said so. <laughs> <laughs> But if you Rats. want to hear more, please, please, please follow us on any anywhere you listen to podcasts. You can also listen to us on our website at wellbehavedwomen.com. You can find us on Instagram at wellbehavedwomenpod or podcast. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have an email that you can actually send us any kind of topic ideas. You just want to say hi or tell us where you're listening from. That is wellbehavedwomenpodcast at gmail.com. Uh, we're on Reddit. On Reddit, is that the one that is well behaved? No, that's oh. on Twitter. Ah, uh, Twitter is the username is just as stupid as the platform. So yeah, we're, so we're, we'll have it on there. I'll post like, stuff on there, like new. Reach episodes. out to us on something else. Yeah, yeah. Be I'm reasonable. gonna get more active on our Instagram. I just need to make sure I get that done right. But anyway, and I was gonna say live. We did York It's Saturday night. No, I'm just kidding. I am gonna get sued if I keep doing all these references. <laughs> 
It's free okay. advertising. They'll be fine. Whatever. Okay. Oh, it all falls under parody. Sure. Yeah. It, it is under comedy and sad, not satire, because these are real stories. They are, but we also have license to be able to make fun. So fuck it. All right. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for listening. We'll catch you next week. Woohoo. Bye, Bye, guys. Bye. How do I end this fucking thing? That, that should be at the end of our podcast. Oh, Every podcast. How do I end this fucking thing? Duda. <laughs> Duda. Duda. And then we hear boogity. Boogity boogity.